Today is finally the day! After learning how to rebuild my entire suspension with new ball joints and tie rods, and also upgrading the shocks with new coilovers, and putting in new front brake lines, I'm finally ready to put the wheels on this car and take it for its first test drive. But first, I'm going to do a coolant flush, which is one of the last fluids I haven't changed since buying this car, and I need to bleed the brakes since I put in new brake lines. And so I got started with the coolant flush. It seemed pretty simple, I just need to unscrew the plastic drain plug at the bottom of the radiator, um, and ideally have towels on hand, so I have to go running for that, and then take off the radiator cap allowing the rest of the fluid to fully drain through. So I got all of that out with no problem. And since I didn't know how old a lot of the components on this car are, or how old the fluids are, I wanted to first put in some distilled water, run that for a bit, cycle that through the system, and then put in the final coolant that'll stay in the car. That way I could use the water to get out any dirt or contaminants that have been in the system for who knows how long. So I ran the car up to temperature, making sure that the heater was on so that the coolant would also go through the heater core and flush that out, and then left it running for about 10 minutes. And I couldn't help but play with the throttle as there. So with the distilled water having finished cycle through the system, I redrained the whole system to get that out so that I can get ready to pour in the coolant. Alright, so I drained all the old coolant out, which is this jug right here that looks like pee. And I just put some fresh distilled water in it and ran it for about 10-15 minutes and then put the heater on for a while to just do a light flush. Um, and now I'm draining that out and once that's fully out, I'm going to put in the new coolant and I'll be done with my coolant flush. Yeah. This was pretty exciting. I mean, not the coolant flush, there's nothing really special about that. Um, but the fact that I felt like I was in the home stretch. The car had been sitting on jack stands for one to two weeks. And so it was really nice to know that everything was finally back together and that I was really close to taking the first test drive. But that sounds a little bit too easy for me, right? Doesn't something always have to go wrong first? Um, I forgot to run the engine after I put the coolant in so I can get the air bubbles out. But I already filled up the overflow reservoir, so I'm a little worried that if I open the radiator I might spill coolant. I'm not sure how that works, but I don't want to risk it. So I tried to siphon some fluid out of the overflow reservoir and then the straw fell inside. And it's a little too deep for my pliers to get to it. So I'm trying to see if I can like snag it with a little wrench and pull it out, but... Uh, the worst part about this one is it's such a silly little issue. It's not like I stripped a big brake line nut or did something wrong. Uh -huh. But luckily I was able to fish it out pretty quickly. Oh. So finally I was able to pour the final coolant in and then run the car a little to get any air bubbles out and then top it off. Done! Okay. So I'm almost there. All I have to do now is just flush the brake fluid and we can finally go on that drive. All I have left is to put brake fluid in it, bleed the system, and put on the old wheels for now. But yeah, I'm getting a lot done from on my to-do list of maintenance stuff. I didn't really think I'd get this far on my own, but uh, that was pretty good. So with that done, I moved on to the final step, the brake flush. And this is the one thing that I actually have previous experience with, since the previous owner and I actually installed brand new brakes um, right before I actually took the car home. So I was able to do this quickly without too much of a hiccup. And then hold it down, and then give it a few quick pumps. I actually felt a little bit like a pro on this one, um, till I did this. Oh, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> I got brake fluid all over the ground. Okay, so the brakes are bled. I'm gonna double check all the suspension to make sure everything's tied down and looks how it's supposed to and nothing's leaking. But um, it's ready to put the wheels on. Now, the, the coilovers I got are, according to Super Miata's website, optimized for 15 inch wheels. Uh, pretty much the exact spec I, I ordered, a 15 by eight inch wheel with a 205 with tire. Um, and because I don't have those, I'm just gonna put the old 16 inch. So I gotta carefully lower it to make sure the 16 inch wheels will work fine and clear. Otherwise, I might need to adjust the ride height, so I'm going to do that now. And finally, we're here. I'm at the actual last home stretch. Just got to put the wheels on, and the car is finally ready to go. I know I keep saying this, but I really didn't think I'd actually be able to make it here on my own. So this was pretty rewarding. All right, wheels are on. Uh, moment of truth. Let me see if uh, all of this actually fits. And ta-da! The, my car was finally back on the ground. Um, and it turns out there really wasn't any issue with the wheels clearing the fenders with the new suspension. So 
That was pretty nice. I'm gonna give it a short drive. I'm expecting the worst. I'm pretty concerned that uh, the car won't clear the driveway easily and that uh, I'm probably going to have some fender rubbing because it looked pretty close on the front. Like the backs are definitely higher than the front and the front was pretty low. But before I do that, I'm gonna make sure I test the brakes because it's brand new fluid and everything. So I'm gonna give it a... <laughs> I've done too much. I have to watch the engine temperature because I changed the coolant. I have to watch the brakes because I changed a lot of the brake parts and the brake fluid. Uh, I have to check the steering because I think my alignment's a little off. And then I have to also pay attention to the ride height to make sure the ride height is usable. And then I'm also trying to figure out, like, do I like the suspension? I put in new coilovers, can I tell? There's too many things I did at once. Uh, I'm starting to forget how to drive this car too, but it feels nice to be back. Wow, I really didn't get far at all. I think when the brake uh, splash shields has bent again and touching it, so I'm gonna go and try and fix that and uh, let the car warm up while I'm at it too. All right, so I think I bent the back. I'm just gonna keep my tools with me in case. Oh yeah, that fixed it. Okay. Now do I clear my front and then the brakes? Felt pretty good. If I clear the front. Ooh. Ooh. I think it rubbed a little. All right, and then brakes. Feeling good. I think it feels good so far. Feels good so far. So even though my face doesn't really look like it, this was actually a pretty unique and special drive for me. I'd never driven a car that I felt so connected with and that I really understood the internals of so much. Um, it really felt like I was driving my car that I had actually put my hands in and done a lot of work to. Uh, and that was a deeply fulfilling experience I didn't really expect. The steering is definitely still very light. I don't think the toe is helping. Yeah, this does not feel good at high speeds. And engine temperature is perfect. Okay, so this just might be the alignment with the toe. Right now, when I turn the car, it, whichever direction it gets a little bit turned towards, it gets really eager to turn to that. Yet. So it's not letting me comfortably go fast in a straight line because if I waver a little off the middle it suddenly wants to go in that direction. So definitely alignment stuff uh, and I want to get an alignment and I know I'll need to get an alignment but I can't until I have the permanent wheels on. There's no, I think uh, from what I understand the alignment will change when I go down this wheel size. So I have to uh, wait until that. Oh, but I can mess with the dampers. I've never done that before. So I'm going to change the dampers to the softest setting and see what that's like. Oh, wow. This feels nice. Oh my gosh. Oh, that is, that is quite noticeable. It's so much more comfortable. It was pretty hard to tell how much of a difference the coilovers really made, um, and that's because I was so thrown off by the alignment of the steering. So, and on top of that, I'm only taking smaller routes in my neighborhood. So I want to first get an alignment and then take it on some spirited drives in the hills of West Austin to really get an idea of what the difference that it made. Yeah, the wheel is not, the wheel is definitely also not straightening out at all. So. Uh... Just a bunch of alignment stuff because I completely destroyed the previous alignment. So after a few days of the car sitting in my garage with the bad alignment, I decided to take a shot at least trying to fix the toe myself, just so it's at least drivable. 
The only reason I hadn't done it earlier was I thought it might be a bit more complicated than it turns out to be. So I pulled it out, I jacked it up, and then I got under to take a look. I was surprised how quick and easy it was. I, I kind of felt like a fool for not trying to fix this earlier. And you can see how much it turned. I actually set up that toolbox to be parallel with the wheel when I started. Oh yeah, this does look a little better. It's definitely still a little bent. Like this probably gives you an idea of why I was complaining about the toe so much. It was so visually obvious too when you looked at the wheel. Um, so it was nice that I was able to straighten up pretty quick. But look how much that wheel had to turn for it to get straight. So that was pretty funny. So with the wheels decently straight, I took it on its first proper drive with all the new parts. And wow, it felt so much better. It still wasn't perfect, there was still a looseness in the steering and uh, a lack of self-centering that I think is just because it needs a proper alignment. But I cannot overstate how dang awesome it felt to be back on the road with the car that I had personally put so much sweat and work into. Every day that I worked on this car, I began to understand more and more how, why so many people connect so much with their project cars. And I mean, I'm just scratching the surface here. I'm just kind of doing like maintenance and changing suspension parts. I mean, people really customize their cars. And I understand a lot of that now. So now with my suspension back in one piece, I'm excited to move on and do some more work on the car. So next up, I have a lot of upgrades and work planned. I'm going to be getting a new exhaust, a new, new wheels. I'm going to try and fix my soft top and doing some smaller upgrades as well, such as improving the really dim headlights this car comes with, fixing some of my squeaky latches, fixing some of the interior lighting, putting in new door bushings, and cleaning up a lot more in the car. And then once the car is fully finished, I want to make more content about driving the car. I want to take it to my first autocross event, and then film some of my adventures going on some fun drives with some friends. So stay tuned for that, and thank you for watching.